the fire alarm. Turn this thing right here. Just hold, hold the the bottom with your non-nimble fingers. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Not nimble at all. Okay. 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 Okay.
Saul was chasing Paul here, and, or David here, and he was running. And he comes up, and he says, in, in verse number 12, it says, And David laid these words in his heart. And he was so afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And he was so afraid, he changed his behavior. And look right down over here, it says, in verse number 13, And, and scrabbled on the door, yeah. doors of the gate, and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Think about that. He was going so wild and so crazy. He let the spit just come across his beard, man. And that's just some weird stuff. I don't see too many people. Oh, James has a beard. Beard gotten so wild and crazy, spit just got <laughs> caught in it. I, I don't have that problem because I can't grow a beard. So, you know, I've never had that. But it's just, the Bible is so awesome, the way it just makes the pictures. You know, people are like, oh, the Bible's so boring. You know, re- just read it honestly. And a lot of people say, oh, the Old Testament's so boring. And I love reading the Old Testament because it has examples for us, but it's very descriptive. Yeah. It really is. It's just cool. And it says, then in number 14, it said, Then said Achish unto his servants, Lo, you see this man is mad. So he did such a good job, he believed. He believed that he was so crazy and, and so mad. And we can do such a good job by just conforming to this world, too, and the situations that we come in. It goes, it says, Wherefore then have you brought him to me? I, and he says, I... Or have I need of a madman that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? You know, it's, it's so crazy to think about that, though, because we can change our behavior so much that the world is like, he's, they're worse off than we are. Yeah. You know, and there's so many times in my life where I think I failed the Lord in just my behavior and my actions, where sometimes I come even worse than the world. But that's just the historical Part of this thing, it's pretty cool to see that that's what really happened in David's life. You know, he was so afraid he changed his behavior. But I just want to look and see what the Bible says and what he says here. It says in verse number one, we're going to look through verse number one through three here. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. And I like that right there in verse number three. It made me think of uh, yesterday when Dave was like, he told all of us guys, he's like, we're going to go around in a circle. And he's like, each one of you guys preach for a minute. I don't know if each one of us got a minute or not. <laughs> we're not good at our voice as Dave is, but, you know, but what did it say right here? It says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and, lo- and let us exalt his name together. What were we doing there? We were exalting his name together, you know, and it, it's just a cool thing right there that we can, you know, when, uh, it's funny, uh, was it Friday night? Dave exalted the Lord. What did the guy, this, there was this foolish guy, and he was all cool guy, and he goes, rock and roll, ACDC, you know, highway to hell, and then he's like, he says to Dave, rock and roll. <laughs> Dave goes, because he, he, he threw out some inspired words. He goes, he goes, you better have faith in the rock before you roll into hell. Yeah. That was awesome. But he was lifting up the Lord right there, you know. But the guy goes, calm down. And honestly, we shouldn't calm down when somebody's just trying to trash the Word of God and trying to trash Jesus Christ. We should lift him up. We should exalt him. But in verse number 2, it goes on to say, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. If we're humble in the Lord... Most of the time, we're going to be happy and we're going to be glad. You know, if we're not humble, what are we doing? We're exalting ourselves. We're not exalting the Lord. It's going to be possible for us to be happy and glad because we're always going to be thinking, how can I lift up myself? Because we're never happy with ourselves. You only can be happy and content in the Lord. So let's look at some uh, verses here on bless and praise. So turn over to uh, chapter number 16 in Psalm. And I want to look at verses 7 through 9. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. You know, think about that. How many times have we always set the Lord before us? <laughs> More often times than not, you know, that we don't set him. It says, because he is my, or at my right hand, I shall not be moved. And that makes me think of the song, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. 
It's a good song. You know, if we're in the Lord, we stand on that rock, which does not move. We can move from him, but he doesn't move from us. It says in verse 9, it says, Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoice. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Look at that. How many times in your flesh have you laid in bed and you're thinking about bills you got to pay or maybe work the next day? But we can have rest and hope in our flesh if we keep our mind and our thoughts on the Lord. Now turn with me over just to uh, chapter number 19. And look at verse number 14. The Bible says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Look at that right there, my strength and my Redeemer. You know, we don't have true strength unless we have our trust in our Lord. And we meditate. You know, meditation always, you know, I always thought that was like that weird sitting there, you know, thinking on other things. But meditation actually really is thinking on God's Word and applying it to our heart. It says the meditation of my heart and His words. And what is His Word? What God gave us right here. That's how we can know and how we can, thy words have I hid in my heart. I might not sin against thee. It's the truth. Now turn over to chapter 31 with me. We'll look at 21 through 24. It says, Blessed be the Lord, for he has showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplications when I cried unto thee. You know, how often, sometimes I found the most time and the hardest we pray is when we're having a hard time or something. You know, it really shouldn't be that way, but that's the way it always is in our lives. In verse 23, it says, O love the Lord, all ye saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. The, uh, be good of courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Right there, be of good courage, he shall strengthen your heart. And all these verses actually have heart in it. I didn't even pay attention to that, but I went through a study in heart, and it just, it's kind of cool how it worked it out. You know, because I have all these verses underlined, and it's like, huh. I already knew these, but it's good for me to be remembered as well, because we forget so easy. It says, all ye that hope in the Lord. Look at that, our hope. He's our strength and our hope. It's right there again. There's so many verses on it. If you seek the Lord, he'll give you strength. He'll give you hope. Well, how often do we seek the things of this world, the riches of this world, and think, oh, man, if I just had a little more money, if I just had something else in my life, it wouldn't help out. But it, truly, that don't bring us strength. That actually brings us more bondage because we're putting our minds on that and on, on the Lord. <clears throat> Let's see. Now look at with me verse, or chapter 66. You know, the book of Psalms has so much to praise the Lord. It's awesome. And we do, we do need to praise Him. And look with me at verses 8 and 9. This is what he says, Oh, bless our God, ye people. Now, this is talk about Israel, but we can bless Him as well. And make the voice of His praise to be heard. Right there, by us going on the streets, by us just talking about the Lord and just lifting up our voices, we're being heard, right? It's the truth. You know, well, we should be, yeah. You know, maybe, you know, Kenny said to use my big boy voice yesterday. <laughs> hey, I tried, all right? I tried to be heard, all right? <laughs> you know, sometimes I, I have a pretty meek voice, and I don't even realize it, you know. But, you know, Jesus Christ was pretty meek, right? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but verse number nine says, which holdeth our soul in life, and suffereth not our feet to, move, to be moved. Look at that right there. Suffereth not our feet to move. If we're focused on him, we shall not be moved again. It's just such awesome verses that show us these things that truly can bring us peace and hope and joy. If we bless the Lord, we are, we are putting our strength and thoughts on him and not ourselves. So look with me. We're going to go over to 117. I might have to make this one into a two-parter. We'll see. Oh, no, right here. I'm going to preach a whole chapter right here. <laughs> see? That's John's chapter 
Jonathan's Yeah, this is Jonathan's chest. <laughs> Sorry, Jonathan, I took it from you. Plagiarizing, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. The Bible says, Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise Him, all you people. For, this, for His merciful kindness is great towards us. And I like that right there because I've had so many people tell me that the God of the Old Testament is angry and He's always killing people and He's always having people be killed. But what does the Bible say right there? For His merciful kindness is great towards us. You know, if people actually read God's Word, yeah. you know, they would understand that the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New and He's always the same today and forever. It's, and yesterday, today, and forever. It's just awesome. It goes on to say, though, it says, And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Right there. The truth of the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Now look over with me to Romans chapter 15, verse 11. The Bible says, And again, Praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And I know that, that word laud, that's another crazy word, you know. <laughs> you know. But praise is right in there in laud, so you're lifting him up, you're praising the Lord. And it says, all ye Gentiles, and right in 17 it says, all ye nations. You know, that's everybody, that's all people. That's the Gentiles, the Jews, everybody. Everybody should lift up the Lord, because the Lord is awesome and you know, just by seeing His creation, you can praise the Lord. And a lot of people will talk about Mother Nature. And what are we in right now? We're in Easter, right? You know, they, this is talking about Mother Nature and the rebirth of spring and all this garbage like that. You know, all you have to do is look at God's creation and know that He's the one who did it, not Mother Nature. Just foolishness, man. Yeah. It truly is because so many times at work, a lot of guys that go hunting, they're like, man, I love Mother Nature. I'm like, you sound like a fool. You know? <laughs> All you have to say is, I love God because He created the animals I'm going to go kill. Yeah. You know? I don't know. But do we truly seek after God and Christ or our own wants? Yeah, we do it all the time. So turn with me. Uh, this is, well, let's read verses 4 through 6 real quick in Psalm chapter 34. The Bible says, I sought the Lord, and He heard me, and He delivered me. From all my fears. In that court there, he was fearful, right? He was fearful unto changing his countenance, making himself act like a crazy man. But he delivered him from all his fears. It says in verse number five, they looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. If we're fearful in the wrong things, we're going to be ashamed of the Lord. Like I said, like sometimes you know you should be witnessing, you know you should open your mouth but you close it because you're fearful maybe I'm going to get made fun of. You know? Think about David was being chastened unto death. That's pretty good fear, you know? And like I said, none of us probably have been chased where somebody wants to stick you to the wall with a javelin. You know, that's some crazy stuff, man. But we get so fearful, oh, what are they going to think of me? Are they going to think I'm too much of a Jesus freak or a, a Bible believer? No, man. You know, they beat Jesus Christ. He died for us. He was bruised for our iniquities. We shouldn't be fearful. We shouldn't close our mouth for him. And we shouldn't be ashamed. Though often we are. But in verse number 6 it says, This poor man cried. Now think about it. Was David poor? No. He wasn't poor. He, he's, he's talking about he's poor in his state. He says, And the Lord heard him, and he saved him out of all his troubles. Now I want you guys to look at with me in Galatians chapter 1. Am I going through the book of Galatians? No, I'm not. No, hopefully. If I did, I probably won't be able to. It would probably be a little shorter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's because of all the wealth and knowledge. You know? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I've read this so much, this page has fallen out. No, no, we were just going through it so much, this page fell out. <laughs> or starting to fall. <laughs> it's true, though. Look at this. It's starting to fall out, but it's all right. Yeah, so look at me at verses 10 through 12 in, verse, in chapter number 1. So for, for do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? Look at that. Do I seek to please men? 
how often in our lives do we seek to please men? You know? But it goes on to say, for if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. You know, if you're trying to please men and appease men, you're, you're serving them. You're serving the men's wants, what they want you to be, not what Christ wants you to be. You know, a lot of times I'm at work and the guys want me to be this foul mouth, like basically womanizing fool. Yep. You know, if I was to please them and what they wanted me to do, would that be a good testimony? No. They'd look at me and be like, oh, you're just like us. And that's what they want me yes. to be. They don't want me to be like Christ. They want me to be like them because it makes them feel good. But if I'm being like Christ, I stand up for him. Hopefully, I should be able to convict them so that they can turn from their behaviors. But it goes on to say, But I certify, uh, uh, certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man. Isn't this awesome? It, keeps, it goes on to say, Neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Isn't it awesome that Paul was taught his gospel by, by Jesus Christ? And, you know, and that's cool, but we have, the more sure word of prophecy, his word, that we can know his gospel just by reading it. But it's just cool to see, he says, neither was I taught it. He wasn't taught it by man. He didn't receive it by man, but he received Jesus Christ. We can receive it because Jesus Christ is the word. That's why we need to be in his word, so we can receive it and show it to the world. Now go with me to Colossians chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 1 through 4. It says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And then it also right there, seek those things which are above. You know, how often, like I said, do we seek the things that are beneath of this world? You know, you know Dave actually was pretty good with that last message last Sunday about, you know, what do we put our minds on and things? And I was thinking to myself, man, sometimes I'm on the phone and I'm looking at knives. And I love knives, man, and I'm putting my mind on that. And I'm like, man, that's becoming like an idol to me. And that was awesome. It, was, it helped me a lot in that. But that's things that are below, not things that are above. Yeah. You know, and I think to myself, man, the money I spend on those knives or all the foolish things I spend on, just not even knives. I could be giving it to the missionaries, you know, to help the furnace of the gospel. Think about all the things we waste, yeah. the time the money, the effort, just the time me be on my phone, I could be reading God's Word. and not, may not even read, just meditate and actually trying to, like, memorize it and hide it in my heart. You know, it's, it's true. It's, but it says, Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Isn't that awesome? Our life is hid with Christ in God. But in verse number 4, it goes on to say, When Christ, who is our life. Now, how often is Christ all in your life? You know, that, that convicts you. That makes you feel like a fool sometimes. But it goes on to say, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Isn't it awesome that we truly can set our, our minds on things that are above? But if we keep our minds on ourselves, because what are, we're earthly, our flesh is earthly, we'll just always keep our minds off Jesus Christ. And it shouldn't be that way. Now, we should seek and search after God through the scriptures. Turn back with me to Acts chapter 17. And we all know this verse right here, but it's, it's good to re be reminded of. In verse number 11, the Bible says, These were more notable than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, how often are you receiving the word with all readiness of mind? You know, it says, and search the scriptures daily whether those things were so. And I think of sometimes when I'm truly not searching the word of God, I'm just reading it because I feel like I have to do it. Because if I don't do it, I'm not, I'm not being a good, saved person. You know, but am I truly searching them to reveal the things of my heart and of my life? A lot of times, no. I'm just doing it to just check off the box and being like. Oh, God, aren't I so great? I read your word today. You know, that's a good thing. And he's looking down at me. He's like, no, search them. Search out the things of me and the things that are above. Yeah, but how often do we do it? Not too often. Now look at, let's go back to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. 
It's good that we're practicing going to a lot of verses because when I when I go through these I like to use a lot of verses so it helps me to see you know plus it gives you guys a good workout in the Bible you know so let's look at verses uh, 10 through 16. All nations can pass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. Oh, and I'm in 18. Hold on. I'm in 118 right here. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And we, we use this a lot, and I used it earlier. But how often do we hide in our heart the things of the Lord? But it goes on to say in 12, it says, Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. You know, a lot of times we will read a Bible and we're like, oh man, I learned something awesome. You know, and you think you're teaching yourself. But God is the one who teaches. His Holy Spirit is the one who teaches us through his word. It says, with my lips have I declared all the judgments of my mouth. I rejoice in the way of thy testimonies as much as, it, as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts. There it is again, meditate, think, keep your mind on them. And have respect unto thy ways. How often do we have respect unto God's ways? A lot of times we have respect unto our own ways. We want to do it our way, not God's way. And another thing I've learned a lot of times in life is to wait on the Lord. And Dave's brought it up many times before. His time is so different from our time. It truly is. We think we should get it now. You know, I deserve it. But a lot of times God's like, you need to wait, learn some, and meditate on my words, and think on these things. And it goes on to say in 16, I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. And I think of that all the time, forget his word. How often do we forget it? You know, Dave will sometimes ask us a question, and then a week or two later he'll ask the same thing, and you know, it's gone. You know, we forget it, God's word. It, and that's why we need to be reminded of these things. You know, because I forget like crazy, man. A lot of times at work, I, I, I have short-term memory. I'll put a tool somewhere, and the guys are like, where'd you put it? I was like, I don't know. And I think to myself, I'm like, man, this is how I am with God and his word. I forget it so fast, you know. One is because you're not meditating on it. And if you look with me at verse number 17, it says, Deal bountifully with thy servant, that I may live and keep thy word. How should we live? By always keeping God's word in our heart. You know, we need to think on these things. So if we truly fear the Lord, we will love and trust him and each other. There you go. We better love each other, right? Dave loves that one. <laughs> Loving each other. He does. He loves all of us. He does. Amanda. Yeah, no. No, he shows us in his own strange, awesome way. You know? Wow. When he buys me a burger... <laughs> Or he gives Justin a little incursion in the car. Yeah, he does. You do. <laughs> he did. He did. He, he actually he gave Justin some incursion because Justin got about the question about Easter on Wednesday. It was good. Yeah, Justin's a good guy, you know. All right, let's turn to uh, Psalm chapter 40. Let's look at verses... Uh, one through four. It says, To the chief musician, a psalm of David. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Look at that, waited patiently, what I was just talking about. We should always wait patiently. We shouldn't rush into things. You know, I think about times I've rushed into things like uh, bought something, you know, and that probably I didn't pray like I should have or waited on the Lord for it. And then one, I either didn't like what I bought, like a car, or it was just a crummy car, man. Most of I had that. We got a Pathfinder for her a while ago. Remember your Pathfinder? That thing gave her nothing but trouble. So don't buy a Nissan. <laughs> no, no. Wait on the Lord, man, before you buy things. But verse number... <laughs> Whoops, sorry, Bert. <laughs> All right, let's look at verse number two. It says, He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. 
And he set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And then also, if we wait on the Lord, what does he do? He established our goings. So this is verse number three. says, And he hath put a new song in my mouth. Look at that, a new song. Isn't that awesome? Sometimes it's awesome. You guys should come out and shoot with us. Dave just starts singing solos. Because God put a, a new song in his, in his mouth and in his heart. He sings solos for us. kind of cool. <laughs> it says, Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. Look at that. People shall see it. People shall see what we, they should see what we think of the Lord and how we praise Him because it will make them fear Him and may believe and make them trust in Him, you know, by our testimonies of what they see in us. But number four says, Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust. Look at that. We need to trust the Lord. And respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. You know, respecteth the proud. I mean, think about ourself. We think, oh, I should be getting more respect. You know, like that Rodney Dangerfield guy. I don't know if you ever heard of that crazy guy. No respect, no respect, you know? That's what the world thinks. And sometimes we can fall into that too. Oh, they don't respect me. And then you get proud. You lift up yourself, right? Because what are you thinking about? You're thinking about yourself. You're not thinking about the Lord. You're not lifting up the Lord. You're lifting up yourself, and then you get angry, and you're like, oh, maybe I should be getting more money at work. I see that a lot with the guys, you know? A lot of times, like, oh, I do so much. I do more than... You know, but you accepted the job. You accepted what they were going to offer you. So just do the work and be quiet, you know. But it, let's turn over to Psalm 115. And we're going to look at verse number 11. Ye that fear the Lord... Trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. I like that, their shield. He protects us. Think of a shield, you put it over you, right? You know, against the wiles of the devil. You know, think about every time you get attacked by some big Jewish lady and her little boyfriend. Dave knows about that one. Let me tell you a quick story. <laughs> Justin, this was Friday night. And Justin offered this lady, I see her walking up and her boyfriend, they're just kind of, they look, they look angry from the beginning. So Justin gives, I asked the lady if she wants to track, and she just used some F words like you wouldn't believe, and that she was a Jew. She was lost on Justin. Justin was, you know, he's a very meek fellow. He just let it go on. But then Dave was preaching, and she walked by, and she's like, don't you be pushing that, you know, blank, be blank, blank, going off the walls and saying that she hopes that God kills us. Well, her... <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome, but it was kind of scary. Her end was scary. Yeah. She, was a, she was a big lady. So then her, I think her boyfriend was feeling like he needed to defend the honor of his woman. So, yeah. so he comes up and he, he goes, why don't you say it to my face? And Dave's like, I'm preaching right here. So the guy comes up in Dave's face and he's like, I'll burn that sign. You know? And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, oh man, am I going to have to jump in and take a hit for this guy? You know, so I saw, and then he turns to me, and uh, he looked at Dave, and what did he say to us? He said, some of you guys are some kind yeah, of loser. Like, like, yeah, just foolishness. But I thought, after they left and screamed and everything, I thought, thank you, God, for protecting us during that time, because he didn't really try to swing at Dave. He was just all talk. But, you know, he is our shield. He is our defender. Even if Dave did get hit, hey, you know, praise the Lord, he got hit for doing something good for the Lord, you know. Yeah. But I just wouldn't, didn't want to wrestle with anybody, you know. I wouldn't have hit him. Me and Dave were talking about good ways to just avoid controversy because you don't want to start throwing punches, you know, you're out there for the Lord, you know. So we had the police right down there anyways. I'm sure he would have came running because he loves Dave. Walk. <laughs> yeah, walk. Yeah, walk. Yeah, he would have let Dave get hit a little couple times then he would have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if he had a donor to come running. So let's turn back to Psalm uh, 34 real quick. And let's just look at what David has to say. We're going to look at verses 7 through 12 on this. He says, The angel of the Lord can pass me round about them that fear him and delivereth them. So if we fear him, he'll deliver us from all our fears. Now, this is talking about 
physical salvation here, but we were talking about spiritual. You know, he'll protect us from the spiritual way. He might even protect us too physically. But it goes on to say, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desire or what uh, it says, what is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Now, like I was saying, if we trust in the Lord, we will love and trust him in others. So turn with me to Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse one. Try and use a little bit of old and new in this, just to give us perspective of the whole word of God. Moses well, says, having therefore these promises, dear beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh in the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And look at that right there. What does it say? Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh in spirit. Now that's not the capital spirit, and it's talking about the flesh. So, you know, we have so much filthiness even after we're saved, we're still stuck in this flesh. We still have to deal with the things of this flesh. But it says, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. If we have no fear of the Lord and we just do whatever we want, we're just going to be doing what our flesh wants us to do. If we think, I have a Father in heaven that loved me enough to die for me, to raise again the third day. You know, we don't do it because we think we're going to get a reward. We will. We do it because we love Him and we fear Him. And I think of that as like a, a father, you know, us as fathers, we want our children to fear us, not because they're going to get punched in the head if they do something wrong. Hey, I haven't done that. <laughs> Have I said it sometimes? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> but I want my kids to respectfully fear me because they love me, not because if they do something, Daddy's going to give them a new toy or candy, which I have, yeah, peeps. Peeps, no, nah, I don't buy peeps. Too much sugar. I'll give them protein bars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if, if you truly think about it, if you fear God the right way, the biblical way, you'll do it because you love him. He gave us so much. He came down here in the flesh. Think about that. He left his habitation in heaven where he had just... All the hosts of heaven singing unto him. He came down here, had to deal with men that are just horrible, yeah. that spit on him, ripped his beard out, chastised him, and he still went through it. And I think about him in the Garden of Gethsemane while he was praying. He knew what he was going to face, and he still did it anyways. Mm-hmm. You know, if you think about that honestly, you should fear him, but have a respectful fear and a love for what he did for us. Now look with me over in Ephesians chapter 5. And we're going to start in chapter, or in verse number 18 and look through 21. The Bible says, And be not drunk with wine wherein excess. Hopefully none of you guys are drunk with wine wherein excess. It says, But be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart and unto the Lord. And... Uh, Verse number 20 goes on to say, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And look at that, submitting yourselves. That's a word that, you know, when I think about that, I think of like mixed martial arts. You've got to give up, you're submitting, you're tapping out. But it's a good submitting yourselves because we should minister to one another, and that's why we come to church. It really is. We don't come because... We're going to get some points from God or, you know, church saves us. You know, a lot of people who are on the street and you hear one lady told Dave and I Friday, oh, I'm just coming from church and I'm going back. And they think going to church is going to give them points of God and make them good. But 
we come because we're supposed to submit ourselves one to another and under the authority of a preacher, which we do most of the time, right? <laughs> I don't know. But it's good because we're supposed to exhort each other, lift each other up in the Word of God, you know, submit ourselves in teaching in the fear of the Lord. You know, and if we are living a life outwardly that each one of us sees that's not right, you know, how are we going to be lifting each other up? We're going to be discouraged. You know, that's why it's good to come here, sing praises to the Lord, and lift up His name. Because it encourages each other. Maybe by one of us not being here, maybe you could be discouraging somebody. Because they're like, oh man, I missed that. I was, maybe I was going to tell that person something that happened to me this week that was encouraging it to me. Maybe they would get a blessing. And then one of us isn't here, and they're all sad and distraught. And, you know, it's true. It can happen that way. I get sad sometimes. All right, so we need to watch our tongues. Yeah. Man, Kenny went through this a little yeah. bit. Let's look at me. We, uh, let's go back to chapter number 34 in Psalm. And we're going to look at verses 13 and 14. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. And then it says, depart from evil and, and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Keep thy tongue from evil. <laughs> How often do we not do that, man? Use our tongue, it's unruly member, right? Oof, that's bad news. So let's go over right there in chapter number 35. It was real close. Let's look at verse, verses 27 and 28. It says, let them shout for joy. And be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness, and thy, and of thy praise all the day long. And like I said, how often do we speak the praise of God all the day long? Sometimes at work, you know, sometimes one of the guys could be slow at doing something, and all the other guys start talking. And it's so easy for me to get in there and be like, yeah, they're pretty slow, aren't they? You know? What about with each other? Maybe here in this church, maybe somebody's, like I said, not here, and you're like, man, they should be here. And you start murmuring and complaining. You're using your tongue. Maybe they're really sick or they hurt themselves. Maybe they're pushing a car and they hurt their calf. You know? <laughs> no, but I didn't miss. <laughs> and I went out street preaching. No, I didn't get extra brownie points for that. If you ever want to see a funny video, I don't know if Bert still has it. He took a video of me walking to the, you know, and he says, look at Dave. He brought a, a cripple and an old man, street preacher. Woman. I thought that was pretty funny, man. You know, but he uplifted me in the Lord that day, you know. He made it funny when it was hurting, so it kind of took my mind off of it. Now let's look at uh, chapter 39, verse uh, 1. I said, I will take heed to my ways, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle, while the wicked is before me. Think about that. Keep your mouth with a bridle about the horse and keep it tamed, you know, while the wicked is before me. Like I said, they're so, it's so easy when you're around lost people to fall right into what they're doing. They're just destroying people with their tongues, you know, and... What do they say? Uh, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Yeah. Words, man, you remember words, man. Broken bones heal. You know, I never had a broken bone, but those who had, they heal. They do, and maybe you forget the pain. Justin had a pretty wrecked ankle. He still feels that pain, though. You know, don't you? Yeah. But words, honestly, you think about it. You think about somebody who maybe tore you down or called you an idiot or something, you think about that every time you see that person. So think about like when we're supposed to be an image of Christ and we use our tongue to tear people down, even the lost. What do you think the next time they're going to think of you? Do you think they're going to think, oh man, that guy is just so full of the Spirit of God? Or no, that guy called me an idiot or made fun of me because I was slow at work. You know, they think of you in those things and you know, the devil always point that out. Now look at me. 
Let's go to chapter 52, 1 through 4. It says, Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. Thy tongue devises mischiefs like a sharp razor. Look at that, and it cuts. Our tongue can be like a sharp razor. Working deceitfully. Thou loveth evil more than good. And how many times in our life have we loved evil more than good? Yeah. yeah. In lying rather than speaking righteousness. Look at that, lying. You know, oh, man, that's some rough stuff. But ver- and it says Selah. But verse number four says, Thou lovest all devouring words. O thou deceitful tongue. Look at tongue, man. Devouring words, devouring one another. We can do it so easily because our tongue is just such a, a evil, wicked thing. And it's, it's an unruly member. But turn to me to James chapter 1. Verse number 26. And the Bible says, If any man among you seem to be religious, and brileth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. Look at that. Deceiveth his own heart. You can deceive your own heart. This man's religion is vain. Look at that. Bridle not your tongue. Put a, just put a bit in your mouth, man. And shut it. Close your mouth. Because you can say some things that, honestly, you'll regret. Now turn me over to chapter number 3. I'll start in verse number 2 and go down for a little bit. It says, For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Look at that. If you, bridle, if you keep your mouth, you can just contain your whole body. Isn't that something weird? That's, that's a cool thing. It's, it's strange, but it's cool. It says, Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor lifts us. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasts us great things. And I like that, boasts us great things, because some of the guys at work, man, they'll be talking stories, and they always got to beat the other one. You know, I did this, I did that. And how often can we do that, too? Like, days brought up about other churches. Oh, we won 17 souls last week. Oh, we won 30. And it comes to competition. You boast, you know. It says, Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it... And it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of bird, and serpents, and things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed to mankind. And I like that because I think of like the big whales over at SeaWorld and stuff. You know, they think they have these things tamed, and they do tame them for a while, but then one freaks out and kills a person. Some crazy stuff, man. <laughs> yeah. But they do get tamed for a short time. But it says in verse number 8, it says, But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly, unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Look at that, it's full of deadly poison. You know, it goes on to say, There would bless we God, or, and, or even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. And then we bless God with our mouth, lift them up, be like, Oh, I love the Lord. He's done so great for me. And then we go and we destroy somebody with our tongue. You know, it's horrible. It's, it really is wicked, but we do it more often than not. It says in verse number 10, it says, Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings, blessing and cursing. My brother, and these things ought not so to be. Look at that. They ought not to be, but do they happen? Oh, yeah, they sure do. It's, it's sad. But what are you going to do? So I think I'll end it there. You know, we're getting down to the end. 
We still have a few more verses, but we'll go through that next time. And then a few other things as well. All right, I'm going to pray. Father, I truly want to thank you for these opportunities that uh, Dave has given us men to get up here, just to be up here for you. I just pray we'll take these things that we've uh, heard today and we'll truly apply it to our lives. There's so many times that we come here and we think, oh, I'm all, I'm, I'm good. I've been reading, I've been praying. And we truly don't take heed to your word and apply it to our lives and truly examine ourselves. Help us to look to ourselves. Help us not to point out the flaws in others, but to look at ourselves first and to apply your word to us. I just want to thank you again for this opportunity to be up here for you. I just pray you just fill Brother Dave with your Holy Spirit. Give him the message that we truly need from your word and help us again to examine our, ourselves, our minds, and our hearts. And everything I pray in Christ's name. Amen.